Greetings everyone, this is Elizabeth. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to have a buzzing good time. I am representing the Butterflies, Bees, and Insect Hop. Hashtag Butterflies Hop. All the creators in the hop will be sharing a bug-tastic design, so be sure to check out all the videos in the hop. The next person in the lineup is linked below, and if you lose your way, you can use Pound Butterflies Hop to get back on track. Be sure to watch all the videos to the end, as some may have giveaways. It would be helpful to each creator if you would like, comment, and share videos. Be sure the bell is turned on for all notifications so you don't miss future posts. Big shout out to Jeannie Ellis for putting this together for us. Thank you! So I have grabbed a gel plate here and I'm just adding wonderful oranges. Those four cards you saw at the beginning are all created with this one 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper stamped with goody orange goodness. And you can do this design with anything. You can use um, circles for butterflies, dragonflies, um, hearts, stars, diamonds, anything that interests you. And basically it's just a good way to get ink on the paper and get our juices flowing for creativity. There I'm using alcohol inks. They don't move so much on regular paper, so they are good for ink splats. And they soak in and tone back a little bit, so they really blend good with this. Here is some shimmer mist, because we all need some shimmery goodness in our cards. Now this is the main focal point for one card. Again, we're using alcohol ink on vellum, and we're gonna let that dry. And it will wrinkle and get weird, but it does flatten out pretty good. I just move it around and get it back to flat. And here we're using some glue right on the wooden piece. Now this piece is going to take some time to dry. So I definitely did this at the beginning. Get my nice black glitter on there and then I set it aside and let it dry while I do some chopping of the paper. Now I knew I needed one panel to do my card to hold that B wooden piece that we're going to be using at the very end. So I just chopped it, got it ready to go, and then I grabbed anything B related and started chopping on my cuddle bug. You can use any die cuts that you have. Um, definitely use what coordinates with your bug or your critter. You don't even have to do this with bugs. But it sure is fun. And here, this here is a mistake. Uh, the Dark B is a different company than the lighter ones. And when it went through, I knew it. The other ones didn't cut out. So what I did is I just trimmed them out the best I could and re-ran them. <laughs> Definitely make sure all your dies are the same size. Or just go one at a time so you don't have this mishap. But it was a pretty easy fix. And just send them back through. And then I was able to get another little panel off the leftovers. And I just trimmed it down, um, I think, to like three and a half-ish. Just so it had some room on there. And here I'm testing that little bee on my card. I was kind of debating how I wanted it to look. And here, ooh, shimmery goodness. We are using some Lunar Paste by Simon Hurley to add some shimmer and hide the wooden element of this design because in the end I want this to be able to come off the card and the receiver to be able to hang it around their house maybe they love bees and they want to hang it on their Christmas tree because it is glitter it will shake off there's no way around that but you know at Christmas time I think that's when glitter is okay so I'm just using my palette knife and then I do go through in with a paintbrush just going in between the cracks and crannies trying to get the excess um, shimmer paste or sorry lunar paste all situated and looking beautiful. Oh, and I wish you guys could see this in real life that 
slippery when wet lunar paste is going to be beautiful for Christmas cards or anything that you just need that uh, sun-kissed glow for. It's really beautiful color. And here, my panel is a little warped from all the water and stuff. And there's definitely plenty of ways to work it if you do not want to mount it with foam tape. You can spritz the back of it, put some weight on it, and it will flatten out. You can run it through a laminating machine on a low heat setting. I mean, lots of options. And here I was debating a very simple card because I used my one honeycomb die and I was like, well, let's try it on black and it just popped. And so we're definitely going to do this on black. Get that all centered on the card. Super. I just love that one sheet of paper can make all these fun cards. And that's all it was. Just get them on there. Isn't he cute? And then I, that's right. I had changed my mind because I didn't want it so close to my bee. So I just trimmed up the other one that I had cut and I put it on there that way. And then we pop dot the bee up and I'm just using the scraps because he's a pretty decent size body. I didn't want a ton of little teeny dots. There we go. And of course it does shimmer because we use some shimmer spray on there. And here's my other honeycomb. And again, we're going good. Okay. We're planning it out. And, you know, I had an idea and <laughs> lo and behold, something happens and I had to change it up a bit. And here again, um, I thought it needed some black, so I trimmed it and then didn't even wind up using him. But, you know, that happens, and I've got him for next time. So, it's not a loss. We just, we take our time, we move ahead, and uh, if it doesn't turn out, it's okay. We've got spare parts for later. And I don't know why I had so much time for <laughs> cutting that out. I should have cut that out. Now, here's where the boo-boo happens. See, I dropped it and moved it a little. Well, it stained the paper right there. And right at that moment, I had to change my design because it wasn't going to be the way I wanted it. And I didn't like the cluster there. I didn't like the separation between the other two. So this is what happened. We went with the three clusters of um, the honeycombs and then the three embellishments. Just another clean and simple card. <laughs> It actually turned out really good. I actually really like how this turned out. So your boo-boos, you just keep going. And you never know. It might even look better than it was gonna before. And your specialty glues, if you have them, have the super fine tip. And that's all I'm using. My Barely Art glue has that lovely thin, thin, thin metal tip. And I'm able to put just teeny weeny bits of glue behind each part and here we go trimming and I'm erasing because I accidentally glued the card shut and I didn't want to redo the whole thing so I just sanded the little nubs of paper that ripped and it looked good now this one is the last little bit of panel that I was able to cut down and I decided that I wanted to layer them kind of monochromatic so what I did is I grabbed some black soot and I just went over the top of the honeycombs to darken it up and it's really cool because it doesn't really hide the color it just mutes it back so it's still orange and then when we set it on top it stands out even more and then I was like oh I can use it like a stencil so we added some texture towards the bottom and again with the fine tip we can add little bits of glue to all the little spots and you don't need much glue you guys it literally will stick with just the specks of glue and i'm just making sure it's all really stuck good because my card panel is a little warped and then here's that other b and he kind of blended in and i was like mm, maybe we'll do it on black again Okay, and here's another thing I did. Um, I put that B on the black paper 
and I didn't like it. Here, here he goes, right on the black paper. And I trim him out. And I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be great. And you know what? It wasn't. It looked terrible. And I'm like, um, uh, and I didn't have any more paper left. So I had to fix it. So what did I do? I just cut all the black off. I got really close and got the scissors because it I didn't glue right to the edge. So I was able to cut under the bee. And so it gave it a little bit of dimension. We do have a little bit of that paper left on it. But I just cut it off the best I could. Something simple we can do to alter <laughs> alter a mistake. So if you back something in a color you can't stand, just trim it off. It's not a waste. So I did like the honeycombs and I just darkened him up. And this was such a better choice. And um, yeah, I really liked how he turned out. And he just stood out. And then I used... Um, a scrap from the other bee I cut and put it down and used it like a stencil and it just it adds so much character and I was really happy with that and then I was debating if I needed anything else on there and that was a big no that was fine just the way it was so we're going to add some foam tape again and again that's because I didn't feel like going through the steps of flattening it out so I just put it on there and it's a little crooked. So whoever gets the card, know it's made with love and by a real person. Because it's crooked. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, if you're loving these cards and you think, oh, I would love to have them, all four of them, drop a comment down below. That is my prize for all my commenters. If you like the cards, drop a comment. I'll enter your name and the winner will get all four cards. All right. And I will draw the name. Um, let's see. A week after this post. I can't remember. I'm super sorry. I'm making this ahead of time. But uh, we'll draw a name one week after it posts. And I will tag you in the comments and say, hey, you won. Send me your email. So here I was debating how to apply this to the card because I do want it um, to hang freely so that the person can take it off. And I took my ribbons and fuzzy threads and I put a glob of glue around them to hold them together and then hot glued them to the thing. And that's how it will hang after it comes off the card. Now here... It was a test. I put that there because it's ribbon. It will peel off the hot glue. It's not a permanent thing. It's, you know, it's homemade. A couple of years on a Christmas tree or whatever, it's going to fall off. And I was like, okay, I'll just tie it on. And the recipient could just remove the ribbon. But I couldn't get it to stay in place. And I wasn't really liking how it was going. So I fuss with it quite a bit and I'm like, uh, and, uh, I eventually peel it off the back and I reposition it to go through the loops at the top of the bee ornament. And then I snipped two little lines in the card base itself on the back flap of the card base kind of like those ring boxes or necklace boxes where they snip the foam and then the necklace sits in those little crooks so there's a snippet there's a snippet and we shove that ribbon right through there hold it open and tie it down and that holds it perfectly in place so here's the four cards i hope you enjoy hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye-bye.